Andrew Jobling, accidental author. I'm very excited to be sitting here with a new author. The very, very wonderful Lisa McLeod has just published and now is holding her new book, Beneath the Roche. So, Lisa McLeod, well done. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you, Andrew. Lisa, before we do anything, why don't you hold up your book and, and show everyone? Okay, this is my book, Straight Off the Presses. Looks great too. Yeah, I love the cover. Yeah, cool. So, um, Lisa, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about, obviously, we're going to talk about your book, um, Beneath the Roche. Can, let's start with that. Can you tell us a little bit about the title and where it came from and what, what, what inspired you to write this book? Okay, it sounds, it, it's a bit of a strange name, Beneath the Roche, but if you work in child protection, you'll know exactly what it means because that's how they talk. So that's why I... So what does it mean? Um, okay, well, I guess um, Roche stands for risk of significant harm. So I guess if, to put it simply, um, if children... Children have to be at risk of significant harm to be reported to um, the child protection in this state. Right. And if they meet that threshold, they'll get a protective response. And if they don't, they won't. Okay. So, All right. That sounds so that's, a little bit, that sounds interesting. So they have to be at risk of seri sorry, significant, significant harm. harm. Yes. Significant Before harm. they're protected. Uh, to get a response, yeah. To get a response, okay, cool. Otherwise, whoever is making the report should do what they can. Do what they can, okay, fair enough. Um, so tell us a little bit about the idea of the book. Why did you write it and what is it? What, tell us what it's about. Okay, well, um, probably about 10 years ago, shows you how long I've been working in <laughs> Um they did introduce new child protection laws and they introduced this risk of significant harm before it was just at risk of harm. Yeah. Um, so that was a change in the, in the um, number of people that accessed the response. That's largely because a lot of people were getting reported and they couldn't get a response anyway. So they upped the ante a bit, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... That changed things a bit and I guess and over the years it seemed to me to be getting increasingly hard to get a response from child protection if the young person was an older yep. child. If they're young, it was much easier. If they're sort of old enough to run away. Or <laughs> old enough to know better. Yeah. They... It, Unlikely to get much of a response. Right. So that was getting a bit frustrating. And, um, and so there were a number of reports and things that are pretty dry. But I remember when I was younger, young adult myself, um, there was this book. That Only was, a few years ago, Lisa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, there was this book called The Borderliners by Peter Hogg. And it really made an influence on me and probably um, where I went and what I did yep. following that. And it was the book about young people who were in the, um, in the other home care and the care of the state. So I thought, maybe I'll write a book. Good idea. <laughs> and um, not that I thought mine will be as good as Peter Books, of course, but I thought, well, um, a different thing rather than writing reports and reports and reports and dry things like that and policy, I'd write a novel. So here it is. I kept thinking about it <laughs> and thinking about it and thinking about it, and then I did join, um, I think, your online workshop, and I didn't get very far with that. <laughs> You're in good company. <laughs> but I started it. Um, and then, Andrew, you contacted me out of the blue and said, would you like to join this new club thing I'm starting with the Elite Club and I'll get face-to-face -face mentoring and um, that. And that 
pushed me to do it. Well, good one. So, well, thank you for that. And, and I'm glad I could have been of help. But, Leslie, you did it, right? So it's your, it's your achievement. So congratulations. So you said really it was 10 years, yeah? 10 uh, years ago you came up with this idea to write a book. Well, I was sort of thinking about it, yeah. Yeah, so 10 right. years, which is a wonderful lesson to people to never give up and to keep going. And it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful lesson of persistence. And it's really but all it had was in my mind for 10 yeah. years. Yeah, well... I think there are a lot of people that have held on to it for much longer than 10 years and there are people that have held, held on to a book in their head to their grave. So so the good news is you've got plenty of life left and you can enjoy it now. So so the book is, tell us a little bit about the book. It's fiction, so it's a novel. Yes, it's so a novel. It's, a, it's a story obviously of, what, a homeless youth or is it disadvantaged child? Or Give us a little bit of an idea of what the book's about. Okay. Well, the book's about... A uh, young girl and her friend, basically, that um, normal young people just starting out in their lessons in high school. And then there's a few changes in their family structure and um, the family situation tends to deteriorate quite a bit for this young person. Um, and so... She and her sister um, sort of are getting neglected and um, eventually the young sister's removed by child protection. And then this girl gets it. So then the two girls decide to go out and try to survive on their own. Um, so they are homeless and they sort of live on trains and that sort of thing for a while because they're too young to get into um, what they call specialist homelessness services, so youth refuges, because you tend to need to be 16 years old to access them. Um, otherwise, you're considered a child and the responsibility of child protection. So they sort of have to take care of themselves till they're old enough <laughs> to access um, youth refuges. Right, yeah. So, um, they do, and um, once the young person does sort of access the youth refuge, um, she has to kowtow down and she's missed school, she's missed a lot of things, so she um, has to get back on track and get her life all together and um, do what normal young people do. So the book, would you say it's, so it's sort of an inspirational book, so it's how, how these young girls get themselves off the street and get themselves back to be normal functioning people? Is that is that uh, the yeah. name of the story? The main one of this book, yes, that is. I yeah. mean, it will be the aim of all of them. I'm deciding to write a trilogy. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So you might, what, what's the, is there a messaging in the book that, that you're really trying to get out there into the world? To, to do something about this, obviously, there's, yeah, this, think, this is a, an issue for a lot of families and a lot of kids. Yeah, I think um, that youth homelessness generally is, well, it's not a lifestyle choice. Like, people don't decide to become homeless, <laughs> um, certainly young people. And I think it's, this book's largely about other systems such as child protection making young people homeless. Really? Right. So what you're trying to do is shake things up a little bit. Yeah. You're, you're trying to get them to look at the system and make it better or certainly maybe inspire yeah, and raise the profile. families to, to do more to, to reduce the, the incidence of youth homelessness, yeah? Yes. So you want to make a difference. So what you're doing is wonderful, Lisa. Like what you're doing is amazing. And, I'm, you know, I... I would take my hat off to you because you work in the child protection space. Uh, yes, I work yeah. in youth homelessness. You, yes. Oh, youth, sorry, youth homelessness. Um, so you you see firsthand the impact of homelessness on these kids, yeah, and and obviously that's having an impact on you. So you want your this is your way of doing something about it, yeah, in a in a in a broader sense. Yes. Yes. So well done. I just want to say well done because it takes a lot of courage to write a book. Certainly on a you know this is a 
a sensitive subject and it, and it can, you know, it can ruffle some feathers in different areas. So and I love the fact you've had the courage to, um, you know, shake things up a little bit, which is wonderful. And the fact you're writing a trilogy means that, uh, that you've got a vision to really make a difference. So good on you. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm writing a trilogy because I've tried to cram too much into one book. <laughs> you got too much to say. Well, that's good. That's wonderful, Lisa. I really think that's amazing. So um, people that want to get a hold of this book, how do they do it? Okay. Um, well, they can get it currently from Amazon, Booktopia, that, those places. Last I looked, you could get both ebooks and paperbacks yep. from them. Um, but soon you can get them from my um, website, which will be www.lisamcloud.com.au. Okay, wonderful. So um, I'm sure there'll be lots of people wanting to get their hands on Beneath the Roche and, and read the inspiring stories of, of these two young girls that survive out on the streets and, and then make it back in the real world. I think it sounds like an inspiring story and, and I want to encourage, if you're watching this, I want to encourage you to, to really reach out and, and get a copy of Lisa's book and if you know anyone that's suffer, struggling in this area, I think it would be a wonderful gift. Lisa, well done. Congratulations on your first book, first of many. And I know it's been a it's been a struggle, and it's been it's you know it's been a journey for you over ten years, and and I've I've had the pleasure of working with you for the last few years, and um, to see this book now in your hands mm. is a is a wonderful testament to your persistence and your courage. So good on you. Thank you, Andrew. All right. Well, look for <laughs> hang on, hold it up again, and say something. Oh, uh, uh, beneath the rock. <laughs> so. Beautiful. Get out there and buy that book. All right, Lisa. Good on you. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye, Andrew.